I enjoy teaching from the rabbinical and biblical teachings of the Hebrew Bible, not just the American Bible, the Hebrew Bible. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. There is a Bible verse that says, it is easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to make it into heaven. Well, in America, the eye of a needle is this little tiny needle with the head that you have to put the thread through. How can a camel fit through that? It seems impossible, which means that no rich people make it to heaven. That's not true. Very, very wrong in the natural way, in the Western way of thinking. But if we study the word according to the culture in which it was written in, which is the Hebrew, Aramaic, as well as Greek, we understand what the eye of a needle really is. It's the fence or the gate around a city. And the needle, the eye is the opening. The needle is the fence, the eye is the opening, it's an arch opening. The camel has to get down on its belly and crawl through. Why would Jesus use that as an example for who makes it into heaven and who doesn't? What's that got to do with that? The camel is an example of what we need to do. Get all the junk off our back and out of our mind. Get on our face before God and pray our way into heaven. He knows a relationship with Him is the only key to making it into heaven. So He used the camel and He wanted us to study the Hebrew to know what the eye of the needle really was, to let you know that rich people do make it into heaven. Once they set their money behind them and their possessions behind them and they put Yeshua HaMashiach first. Who is Yeshua HaMashiach? He is Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God. I is a blood Jew with a high uh, number, if you will, percentage of Jew in me. I'm so pleased. I am privileged to bring you the Hebrew teachings and teach you about the feast, which you'll see on these teachings. I teach you about all seven feasts, what they mean and what they mean to you. I also teach you about astronomy, not astrology, astronomy. The devil has astrology. God has astronomy. It's amazing what we can learn right here from the Word of God. And you see, when you pick this up and you start reading it and reading it and reading it and reading it, it eventually goes from your head to your heart. And it's, to me, it's more fascinating than television. This is more creative than television. As a matter of fact, television got its ideas from the 66 books of the Bible. Have you ever heard of Beam Me Up, Scotty? Star Wars? Star Trek? All that? Come on. It came from the Word of God. When the rapture happened, God beamed them up. <laughs> if you want to put it in those terminologies, every, every, even the evil things that the evil people used to do came from the Word of God that you see on television. So why not go to the root and get blessed while you're doing it? The world doesn't bless you to watch their stuff, but God blesses you when you spend time in His stuff. So please take, the, take a moment and listen and learn about the Messianic Torah teachings over and over and over again, we teach how they affect your life and how the windows of heaven are open over your life on certain days so you can be blessed, especially on those days. And that's his days, not Gabriel Pochoy. Okay? Please come over here and stand on the white carpet. On this side, please, because my microphone is on this side. Wait a minute, this is the book of Revelation. Tell me, tell me where the book of Revelation is in the Bible. Very last book, right? So what's that tell you? If something in the last is happening, then that means we're in the last, right? Did you know that Jesus said in Genesis chapter 3 that I will not strive with men forever, but I will only let you live on, excuse me, not Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis, he said I will not strive with men forever, but I will only let him live to be 120 years old. Do you know that from the time that that was said to the time now we have had 120 generations? We're at the last one. It's not all, let me just put it nicely, it's not all your sin. He's tired of men sleeping with men and women sleeping with men and people stealing. As soon as you turn your back, you got something stolen. He's tired of people lying. He's tired of braggers and boasters. He's tired of pride and jealousy and unforgiveness. Get rid of it. It's not worth it. Why you got to say, Lord, I'm doing it your way. I'm not perfect. I'm tired of making mistakes. But God doesn't have you here by accident. 
what if the rapture does happen during the Jewish, which Jesus is a Jew, whether you like it or not. God is a Jew, whether you like it or not. And we all have to follow the Jewish custom, whether we like it or not. That's the truth. And it's nothing evil. All it does is say, we're taking time out to do things God's way. And we are adopted Jews because we said Jesus was the Messiah. He invites us all in, nobody separate. No color, no creep. You know that there's black Jews out there from the tribe of Dan? Dan? You know there's Mexican Jews from the tribe of uh, Issachar. There's every generation, Filipino, Spanish, black. So I'm tired of people saying Jews are white with long noses. Come on, we're not all ugly. Okay? Every culture has Jews. Look up your Latin mother's maiden name and her mother's maiden name all the way back. And every culture on this earth is from a Jewish tribe. And if you do your roots, you'll probably find out exactly what tribe you're from. Okay? Now, read this very loud. Okay. Because they have kept the word of my patience. Okay, well, I also because you have kept, you, all you, have yeah. kept the word of his patience. Go ahead. I also will keep thee from the hours of temptation. He will keep you from the hour of temptation. It shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. To keep you from the hour of temptation upon, what version is that, by the way? Yeah. New King James? All right. Okay, and is it almost done? Okay, stand right there a minute. Let me see what it says in my version, okay? Okay. Revelation? Who's got a New King James? Who's got an Amplified? I want all the versions to say. You have New King James? Honey, can you read New King James really loud? And if you can't find it, I'll find it because I got a New King James too. Revelation 3.10. Mine said something more. Mine said two things. It said, Remember, therefore, how you... Whoa. Because you have kept my commandment. Go ahead. This is real. Okay, hold on. We go back to verse 10 and it says, hold on. It says, first, all of you, you're all done suffering. You don't have to suffer anymore. He said, I will keep you, not from the hour of temptation. Now you can sit down, my dear. I want to hear. Now, he, he said, I will keep you. You can sit up front. I don't care. I love your company. You don't have to sit all the way in the back. Somebody you have to read again. Yeah. Yeah. Another one. Can somebody give me another answer? Money. Sin? Yeah. 
Can, during the tribulation, what's the biggest temptation to mankind? The chip. The one world order microchip that they already have in two million people on this earth. It's an invisible one for the guys and the women that, that don't want it so visible, they just put it on an invisible triangle chip on their forehead. And it's got all their information. They never have to carry cash again. They never have to carry a credit card. They don't have to do anything medical. Everything right here. Or they put it right here between these two fingers or those two fingers because the heat has to keep it motivated. Activated. Okay? okay? So that's the greatest temptation because you can't buy gasoline for your car. You can't buy cigarettes. Let's be real. You surely can't buy marijuana. You can't buy food. Your belly's going to hit your back. And then the hour of temptation comes. Do I take this stinking chip so I can buy a taco? You don't. That's the truth. It will be the worst time this earth has ever seen. Starve to death. You have one, one or two choices. Starve to death or go to prison. And when you go to prison, they're going to torture the stinking hell out of you. And then they chop your head off. But they torture you to make sure that you can take that chip before and if you still refuse him you get your head cut off it's in the word of god it's not the good times that are coming ahead but this is your hope revelation chapter 3 10 11 and 12 says you don't have to suffer anymore i will keep you from that hour and i'll keep you out of here how do you get out of there tell me somebody somebody tell me more than one times uh, or more than one different ways how you make the rapture what does it take to make the rapture? There's one. Read the Bible again. What? Obey it. Obey it. Number two. And refrain from sin. And refrain from sin. The three biggest things. That doesn't mean, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. That means right now, today. Read your Bible. Obey it. If it says forgive that person that just spit in your face, you're going to say, okay, Lord, I forgive them. Because I know it's not them. It's the devil on their back. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Revelation 3.10. Okay, so now we know that we don't have to live through the horrible tribulation that's about to happen. How do we know the trip is about to happen, y'all? How do we know? Dr. Hope's been preaching this and preaching this and preaching this for the last month. Tell me. I wasn't here for the last month, but there'll be signs of the times. And to pay attention to what's going to happen. I wish everybody in the, in the world could hear that. Can you say it a little bit louder? That's exactly what I needed you to say. There will be signs of the times and to pay attention to them because they alert you. Can I, if you don't know, I'll answer that question. But what kind of signs are we looking for? You know, we Jews, we always ask for a sign. Why do we ask for a sign? Because we're tired of making mistakes. We're not going to go to the right until we get the sign from God that that's where we have to go. Otherwise, we stay right here. That's why they don't have the earth. They don't run off and do their own thing. They wait for a sign from God. God, give me the sign that I need to know. Do I go this way or that way? If not, I'm staying right here. Smart. Amen? What sign? Can you, Joyce, read nice and loud Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3, and 4? And y'all are welcome to write these down. Because when they happen, and when I'm gone, I know I'll be gone. I know. You won't see me here anymore. By the, by the matter of fact, in two weeks is when the rapture could begin. So if, if two Thursdays from now, if Dr. Hope doesn't show up, I'm out of here. I'm not joking. I don't care if you think I'm crazy. I'm on my way to heaven, and I am not going to live through the tribulation. It was my job to come here to help you get ready to get out of here. There's millions of us all over this earth that are risking our reputation and everything to say, what if? What if? A big if. All these signs are taking place. We're not stupid. We're saying sign after sign. We're going, oh, well, we didn't even ask for these signs, and they're happening, and they're lining up with the word of God. Something's about to take place. We didn't even ask for them. And these signs are biblical signs that tell us you're on your way to heaven or you're on your way to hell. Which way are you going to go? Excuse me. I have my, my microphone hanging there. So, so 
you know, if it gets a little bubble. Okay. Revelation 12, 1 through 5, Joyce. Nice and loud, please. Hold on. A great sign, like she just said, appeared in the heavens. Who's talking here, by the way? You remember Jesus? Anybody remember Jesus? Remember his 12 disciples? You remember he had how many favorites? Three. Three, he did. And do you remember what their names were? Peter, James, and John. This is John talking. John was the only disciple that lived his full days. And when he was on the Isle of Patmos, the same Isle that Paul was persecuted on, he wrote this. Check this out. Listen to this. And I saw a sign. And he went, wow. Go ahead. A woman clothed with the sun. That's Virgo. It represents two things. Virgin Mary. And it also represents Israel. Amen. Amen. Keep going. With the moon under her feet. Eh? Now on her head a garment of twelve stars. What? What twelve? Twelve Twelve apostles. Of tribes of Israel. He's right. So what? Okay, so twelve. So everything God does is by purpose. It's not by accident. How many stars are normally above our head every day when we look up in the sky? Y'all, we can look up. We don't have to look at our cell phone. We can look up and see all this is happening. You ever, you ever walk outside? Joyce and I were just having lunch the other day. We were talking about this. How many people, you know, they drive down the road, but have you ever just looked up? And you're amazing the stuff you see when you just look up. Yes, ma'am. You see the star of Bethlehem from here? Yes. That's exactly right. What she's talking about is the same thing that Joyce is talking about. It is the star of Bethlehem that's appeared again in the sky, but this time there's more activity than just the star of Bethlehem. Never in history has what's taking, what is taking place now is taking place. This is why I'm here to talk about the rapture. Okay, because... Hold on. Then Virgo, in Virgin Mary, is in the heaven. You can see her. She's like this. She's so heavy with... What planet is inside of her? And what does Jupiter represent? King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Well, who is the king's bride? Who is the king's harvest? So now we are in Jupiter. Excuse me, we represent Jupiter. It re represents Christ and his harvest. And now we are in the birth canal, getting ready to come out. Oh, this is so exciting. This is what John saw. So now he, she's getting ready to bear this child, and guess who's there? The dragon. The dragon. Have y'all looked up in the sky? I'm going to show you a picture of it tonight. You can literally see it with your naked eye, y'all. His home is Nibiru, Planet X. It's a brown, red, dusty, junk, dead planet that has been sent to throw the wrath of God on the earth for all those that did not obey his word. And we get to stay away and avoid it. The, the Nibiru comes by. By the way, the dragon is on it. The Nibiru comes by. The planet does not hit the planet. So don't believe those lies that they say it hits the planet because it doesn't. It goes around it, but it has a long dragon tail. And the dragon tail is full of debris. Ask NASA. At least they're telling you the truth on that much. Most of the time they don't tell you the truth because they don't want you to know that what they're seeing lines up with Revelation chapter 12. They're scared, they're liars, they're haters of God, so they're surely not going to give God the glory and say it's the same thing that happened in Revelation. So now this tail of debris is coming, and as it sweeps by the earth, its tail throws all its debris into the earth, just like the Bible says. Revelation, they have seen this coming for two years. Let me just back up and say, two years ago, you could have gone on YouTube and seen two suns in the sky, and they were as far apart as east as the west, over in the UK, they're like, there's a sun over there. How can you? Why isn't NASA saying something about this? And everybody was quiet. Why is there a sun here? Why is there a sun here? It doesn't make sense. And every, I was driving up north, um, I want to say about six weeks ago. 
And on my way up north about 6 o'clock in the morning, sure enough, the sun was coming up. Maybe it was 7 by then, I don't remember. But anyway, the uh, sun was coming up, and the clouds were just covering the, our sun. And you could see the two suns sitting right next to each other. So that tells us that within a two-year period of time, that sun that was all the way over here, that's Nibiru, has traveled so fast, it's come right over next, right, look like two double days right next to each other. And that's what NASA doesn't want me to know. They don't want everybody to quit making their house payment. They don't want everybody to quit their job. They don't want everybody to panic. They want life to go as normal until BAM! But, those of us that know the Bible, we know exactly what's happening. We're like, oh, y'all can live through it. We get out of here. Jesus is going to take us out. And y'all, because you didn't read your Bible, you're going to have all those asteroids hit you. And you might be handicapped for the rest of the seven years if you take the chip or if you don't. Who knows? It will be hell on earth. It's nothing you want to live through. Okay, so Joyce, now the red dragon is seen to the visible eye. Can you read that verse? I think it's three or four. Another sign. See, she said all kinds of signs. You're right. Go ahead. joke. They realize this is the most powerful book on this earth. And it doesn't lie. So I'm going to read something that's the truth because there's so much lies out there. Let me find something that's going to tell me the truth. It says that the, that the raptured saints will be caught up and he gets us out of here. And then all hell breaks loose on here. Now, can someone go with me to Luke chapter 21 to 25. Everybody, that you have your Bible, I want you to read this one because you are going to be so happy when you read this. You there? Somebody tell me when you're there. Okay, you ready? For this lady back here with the glasses on, this is the first time I've ever seen you. Thank you for saying that because it's exactly the answer I'm looking for. And here's a third sign, y'all. Look, this is Yeshua. Hamashiach, Yeshua Hamashiach, my Master and Savior Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. Y'all call him Jesus Christ. I call him Jesus Christ too. But Yeshua Hamashiach is saying this himself to his disciples and all the people. He's saying this. He says this. And there will be signs. Talking about the rapture. In the sun. When did, did we just have a sign in the sun? What? Tell me what. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, we've had eclipses before. I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna be a devil's advocate, advocate for a minute. So yeah, so, so we've had signs before of the sun. Okay, we've had eclipses. So what, Doctor Hope? Well, that was a precedented eclipse because it was more unique than all the others. By the way, who all saw it again? I have a picture of it tonight where it's filmed. We'll show it. It was one of the most beautiful things, y'all. Just beautiful. Okay, I know Hitchhiker saw it too. Okay, now let's go to the next one. In the moon. So there'll be signs in the moon. Well, duh, when the moon passes in front of the sun, right? But what other signs in the moon has there been lately? How many blood moons? Y'all know what blood moons are? When the blood, when the moon turns bloody, right? Bloody red. You know what time? You know when they turn bloody red? Can somebody remind me when they did that? In the year 2014, there was two. 
In the year 2015, there was two. When did they take place? Exactly on God's high holy days. So we Jews are down there doing our thing and we're looking up going, whoa. It was scary. It didn't fall on the day before. It didn't fall on the day after. And the truth is, y'all, we love life. We want it to go on and 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 on. We want to own the whole earth, not half the earth. That's the truth. So we surely don't want to see a red blood moon. And then we don't want to see another one. And then we don't want to see a third one. And then we don't want to see a fourth one. And we surely don't want to see the eclipse. And then we don't want to see the rest of it because we know our time is up. Party's over, Gabrielle. That's the truth. And that's why we are getting serious like, uh-oh. But on the flip side, no more suffering, no more pain, no more homelessness, no more drug addiction, no more somebody being rude to you, no more negativity. You can kick that devil in the teeth and say, I've had enough of you. I'm not missing the rapture for you. You put me in misery. You understand? So, oh, y'all, please, I beg of you to hear me. It could happen within two weeks. If it doesn't, so be it. You don't lose your faith. If it doesn't, we know we look for the next time. We know the rapture isn't going to happen in the spring. We know it isn't going to happen in the winter. We know it isn't going to happen in the summer because the Bible says so. I don't care if people say, oh, that's not true. Read your Bible. Study it according to the Hebrew. Not according to Australia, not according to Africa, not according to the United States. It was written in the Greek, Arabic, and Hebrew. You need to read it in the Greek, Arabic, and Hebrew. And then it makes sense. The rapture will happen during the fall season of the Feast of Trumpets. And it's no man knows the day or the hour because it's, a, it's the first day, the second day, the third day, or the fourth day. It's a three and a half day period that it could take place. In the middle of the night or in the middle of the day or any time in between. So on the 21st of September, if I'm not here, I'll never be back. Thank God. You understand? And it starts actually the night before. In the evening, because Israel is 13 hours ahead of us, y'all, I think. I don't remember right now. Anyway, so it starts in the evening. So if the Lord decides to come, and the next day, it could happen the day I'm preaching here, y'all, and this whole place could be empty. Wouldn't that be insane? Your clothes will be left behind. You get a nice white robe on, like we portrayed, and we're going to portray a little bit tonight. And you never have to worry about going through junk again. You get to take a seven-year vacation in the heavens. People think, well, my life's over. I didn't get to do this. I, I didn't get to do that. And I wanted to do this. And I wanted to do that. Now, excuse me. Get in line with the rest of the humanity. None of us have ever fulfilled everything we wanted to do. Even the richest person wants more money. Even the guy that owns all the businesses still wants another business. Even the lady with the most plastic surgery still want another plastic surgery because we can never have enough. We're stinking human beings. So don't worry about it. Nobody has accomplished what everyone wants to accomplish. So we need to just accept the facts and say time is up. Four red blood moons exactly on the feast. The, the moon, excuse me, the sun took place. And now, y'all, here's the exciting part. Okay, it says, and there will be signs in the sun, number one, in the moon, number two, and in the stars. Holy Toledo. Didn't we just read in Revelation chapter 12 that she had, the whole sign is about the stars. Virgo is a star, star constellation. The planets are a star. Leo is a star. So he's telling you, here's when it's going to happen. Okay, so there's... The sun, August the 21st. The moon, you can even say August the 21st of the four red blood moons of 2014-15. Then the stars, Revelation chapter 12 on September 23rd. Now we go to the next sign he's telling you. Just in one verse. Imagine all the other verses. Hold on. Then it says, and on the earth. Okay, now he's got, he talks about the heavens. Sun, moon, stars. Okay. Now let me try to get their attention. God, human beings. Let me come down to the earth and try to get your attention down here. So now he takes his focus off the heavens and he puts it on the earth and he says, 
and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity. Now I'm going to read the other version I had. He said, with anguish and perplexity. Are you ready for this? With the toiling of winds in the sea. Wait a minute. What is toiling of winds in the sea? Is there a hurricane right now? Is there another one coming? Is there a third one coming, I heard? There's one coming up the coast of Mexico right now, and its remains is coming up to California tomorrow. Live. That's where all these clouds are. Then there's Irma coming across, which may hit Florida. Who knows? So he's telling you, when all these things come together, that's when I'm coming. So we have the sun, the moon, the stars, and the hurricanes. Have all them happened already, y'all? Has it, have they happened? So would that, if, if Jesus was standing here, not Dr. Hope, if Jesus was saying, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the hurricanes are taking place, you would all go, well, Lord, that, that just happened today. You would believe him because there's no doubt that all four of these have taken place. And he said, that's your sign that you're going to know you better look up. Let me put it in today's your life. Read your Bible, obey it, and walk away from sin. Now, you don't have much time left. Feast of Trumpets begins the eve, eve, eve of the 20th, but actually I'll say the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th of this month, September 2017. Am I saying the rapture will, 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 will undoubtedly take place? No, I'm not God. But I'm looking at the signs going, wow. Then he said, it will be like the days of Noah. Hold on, right? It will be like the days of Noah. When y'all you think of Noah, what do you think of? Noah's ark? Why did he have an ark? Is it flooding on the earth right now? So it, it's not going to flood the whole earth, but it sure will flood here and there and there to get people's attention. So I was looking, one day I, I woke up and the Lord said to me, look at the weather. And I thought, what's beautiful outside? Why am I the weather? And I went on the internet, okay, okay, okay Harvey hit, okay, 64 dead. Wow, 64 missing. And then I kept looking and I realized that God wanted me to look at the whole earth not just the United States. So I started looking at other parts that were raining, that were getting hurricanes, that were getting tsunamis, that were getting monsoon rains. You know that there's 2,000 in one country, but they don't talk about them because they're third world countries. But you know what? Jesus died for them too. Get off your high horse of pride and go help them too. 2,000 are dead. 2,000 are dead in Nepal for the same thing is taking place in Texas. But nobody hears about them. Precious people lost their lives. Almost 4,000 souls, I think they said. Almost 4,000. Gone. Because of heavy rain and flooding. But Jesus said, it'll be like the days of Noah when the Son of Man will return. And it's all happening exactly. These signs that she just read are happening exactly on the Feast of Trumpets. Not a day before and not a day after. That's what scares us. And it doesn't scare us bad. It scares us like holy smokes. We better get as many people saved as possible. We better hand out as many Bibles as possible. We better get our house in order because this could be it. If it's not it, we go on. But at least we were ready. I tell you, I would be very surprised if I'm still here by October 1st. I'll be surprised if I'm here on October the 25th, or excuse me, September the 25th. I don't know. I'm not God. But I see the signs, and we know the signs. Now, he also talked about these signs taking place, and it, I'm going to read the rest of it. She knows she's preparing. But here's what happens right after that in in. Revelation chapter 5, or 12, verse 1 through 5. It says the tribulation begins and the woman runs to the wilderness. Now we know the constellation stays in the heavens. She doesn't go running anywhere. 
But that represents Israel running to Petra to hide from the bombs and all the negative that's coming at her. It's not just Israel, it's us too. North Korea just announced on Sunday, what was it? Y'all seen that North Korea did its third hemoglobin, was that what it was? It was a hemoglobin bomb. You know what else they have in store? And North Korea, we've never done anything negative to them. It's the demons on their back. They hate the Christians. They hate Israel. They hate anything good. They love to kill. They want to be ahead. And it's not just them. It's all over the world. But you know what else? They, they, have, a, they have a weapon that will melt electric devices just like that. So there'll be absolutely no communication. No, you, you wouldn't be able to microwave food. You don't have cell phones. You, none of the above. And then everyone that touches something that was affected by the bomb dies within 90 days. It's the truth. Look it up on the internet. It's been out since 2012. They started announcing this, and now it's finally getting greater. So we believe, and of course they're not going to tell us because they don't want us to, you know, panic. They want to keep the earth as calm as possible. But they believe that's the bomb that North Korea wants to hit. And they brag that they have one for California. They brag they have one for Alaska, one for Hawaii, one for Tulsa, Florida, and Washington, D.C. Come on, y'all. It's time to say, Lord, take me home. <laughs> take me home. You, you, all the signs are here. I'm ready. Don't leave me behind. And by the way, the animals will go too. All the innocent animals will go. As in the days of Noah, what did Noah do with that ark? Did just him and his people get on there? No, he had all the innocent animals get on there. So if you got a sweet little cat or dog that's, that's mm -hmm, they'll be gone too. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Let me just quickly put this. So this is what's happening right now. Every single one, the sun, moon, the stars, and the floods are written here that says if they happen all at once, which they did, and they are, and the Bible doesn't say they all have to happen on the same day, which they can. He talks about seasons. Season. Okay? Season. They're all happening in the same season. Revelation 3.10 says you don't have to worry about it. You can smile. The big is. Because you're going up. Revelation 12.15 is what takes place on September 23rd. Lord willing, we will be raptured anywhere between September 23rd and 24th. That's the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, Deanna, let's play those videos, please. Play the, play the one with the red dragon first. It's only about three minutes long. And then I'll go back and tell you which one to play next. This is Yahoo 7. And what you're looking at is the infamous red dragon. This image has been removed patched over, blacked out by multiple different agencies. And for the longest time, many people have been trying to get a bead on what this thing is doing as it appears to be moving closer. The question is, what is it? And it does have the characteristics of a dragon image. And it does bring into question, what are they hiding? Why? You have everything out there in space. When NASA goes putting black patches over top of objects that are obviously there, and especially ones that we've had a chance to view because you were able to view this object, it, I believe it was sky view, NASA's sky view. Here's the eyes. In this program, One eye, for nostrils. however long they were letting everyone, it was there until they realized, oops, it's not blacked out. And as I'm about to show you in this video, they too have took the steps to hide this image. Once again, the question, why? And not only that, the addition of this dragon image to the storyline here of what takes place in 2017 in the heavens is absolutely amazing. It puts this dragon of all places right between the legs of the virgin, waiting to devour the birth. Just like her. And what's sitting right between her legs as well? 
Jupiter. The coincidence of this is just unbelievable. At first, in my last video, the biblical signs in heaven that spoke about Revelation 12:1, the virgin and the crown of stars above her head. That was very rare because there was three planets that came into alignment right into Leo that gave you the 12 stars. And it only happened at that one time, with her being clothed in the sun, the sun in her head, and the moon at her feet, and Jupiter in between her legs. Now, at the addition that the red dragon is sitting right between her legs, and that NASA's trying to hide it, I think that raises a lot of questions. You're going to be hard pressed to find this image out there anyway. And the facts are, it was there. They let everyone see it, whether they slipped up or not. This is it. And I'll leave a link, as always, so you can go and follow the steps and punch this in yourself, and you, you will see what you're going to get now. This is what you will get now. Blacked out, a huge cover-up taking place. And like I said before, you can see right here, to paint, paint the picture a little bit more vivid for you, that here it's blacked out again by Google. So what are they hiding, guys? And we already know what the image looks like. We just don't know what the new ones look like as it gets closer. But this is the red dragon and the blackout region where the view room potentially sits. Something else there they're blacking out. But this is huge. And look where it sits. With Jupiter here, it sits right there waiting. Very interesting. And the fact that they're going out of the way to cover this up adds to the speculation as well. I wanted to share this with you guys so you realize what's really going on out there and what's really taking place. And if you ask me, there's one heck of a combination of signs coming together on this day Amen. in the heavens that are just absolutely undeniable. We care what anyone says. It was one thing to have the 12 stars come into play above her head with the sun right there at her head and the moon at her feet and then Jupiter between her legs. But now with the dragon waiting, paints a pretty vivid picture. September 2017, guys. I'll leave links. It's been Dr. Seven. Eyes to the skies. Eyes to the skies.
about the rapture, I want to make sure that you understand when I talk about months and years, we're talking about God's calendar, God's prophetic calendar. God's calendar is very different from our calendar because our calendar, one year equals about 365.25 days. But in God's calendar is exactly 360 days per year, and each month is exactly 30 days. Now, some years have leap years, and leap year is basically an extra month added on top of the 12 existing months in God's calendar. And also, days are the same, all right? In Jewish calendar, in a Jewish time, a day is basically 24 hours, all right? If you look at the chart, there's exactly 24 hours in a day. But how they spread the hours is very different from how we calculate our time. Now, our time goes from midnight to midnight, but the Jewish time goes from about 6 a.m. So 6 a.m. is a new day, which actually makes more sense, to be honest, because they're basing their time based on the sun. We don't. We base our time based on the midnight, based on the zero hour. But in Israel, their first hour is exactly when the sun rises, which I think makes far more sense, to be honest. We should probably base our time on the Jewish clock. Because their first hour is around 6 a.m. hour time. So that's their first hour. Okay, so that's 1 o'clock in Jewish time, basically. Uh, very, very interesting. And their nights are divided into four different watch. The same thing, you know, after 12 hours the sun sets because they go from, what, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the sun sets about 6 p.m. our time. And of course, this is in Jewish time zone. Now, when it comes to nighttime, they don't go like 13th hour, 14th hour, or something like that. They reset back to first hour. Now, that doesn't, doesn't mean that the, the days have shortened the 12th hour. It just means that it keeps going on first to 12 hours of the night. Now, in the nighttime, they have the first watch, second watch, third watch, and fourth watch. Now, the first watch goes from about uh, 6 p.m. And of course it goes from have to be careful about that. This is why I prefer to specify. Okay, here we go. There during tribulation. And he stops to sacrifice in the temple, right? In the third temple. And that causes the abomination of desolation. That is the Antichrist, and that starts the Great Tribulation, which is the latter half of the seven year tribulation, which the Bible says just right there, it says about 1,290 days. Now it also says on verse 12, blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. So if you look at it, right, three years and a half, what, what is that? Three years and a half in God's calendar is how many days? So let's do the calculation. 360 days times three plus 180 days because we have to divide 360 days by half, and that comes out to be 180 days. So you've got a total of 1,260 days. That's three years and six months in God's calendar, right? So that's the first half of tribulation. Well, the second half of tribulation, we will assume it's the same. But because the Bible actually provided a number, 1,290 days, we have to use that number as the great tribulation. Why is it 1,290 days? Because of the leap year. As I said before, the leap year adds an extra 30 days in could the time price? Perhaps not, because the coming of Christ is after the 45 days. But what we do know for sure is that the 45 days comes after the seven year tribulation. Okay. Actually, I'm not, that's not quite a jubilee year, but it's a long time, all right, 2055. And between those two years, there's only been about 11 years that match exactly 2,550 days of tribulation, excluding the 45 days that Daniel 12 talked about, where the dates match exactly from the day of trumpet or Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Very interesting. Now, of course, we have 11 dates, 11 rapture days, spanning from 2017 to 2055. So which one is the correct date? Huh? Well, that's where we turn to the Jubilee references, right? This is um, references to the Jubilee years, and I'm just doing 2017 because, you know, everybody's doing 2017 this year. And again, 2017 is a candidate for a possible rapture, right? 
September 21st, 2017. So let's take a look at it. why 2017 is a good year while we're betting on this year. I'm not saying rapture is going to happen this year, but I'm just saying why this year is a good bet, all right? Because of the reference years. We go back 50 years, it's 1967, and that was what? The last Jubilee cycle, this, this Jubilee cycle we're part of, is the 120th Jubilee cycle from Adam. Okay, 80 Jubilee cycles from Abraham, 70 Jubilee cycles from Moses, and finally, 40 Jubilee cycles from Jesus. Perfect round numbers. And 40 is a great number for Jesus. Jesus fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, right? I mean, these are great numbers, and of course, note the number seven, again, number seven, 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 right, five, seven, ten, seven, and also Adam, 120 Jubilee cycles. What the Genesis 6, 3 say, when the fallen angels start meeting with human females, because they were beautiful, what did God say? My spirit cannot contend with man, for they're mortals, and therefore their days will be 120 years. Now, I believe Elohim meant to say that it was 120 Jubilee years, right? That's interesting. 120. Why did the Bible say 120? Well, today, right now, it's exactly 120 years. All the way from that 120 years times 50. What do you get? You get exactly 6,000 years. So 2017 could be the 6,000th year of humanity ever since the creation of Adam and Eve, right? How fascinating is that? And of course, we look at the corresponding years down below. We have 1967, the Six Day War in Jerusalem, and then we have 1917, the Ottoman Turk Empire was driven out by British surgeon General Allenby. Guess what? These are all exactly 50 years apart. What could that mean? And not only that, look at the events. The Six Day War where the Israelites, the Jewish people, they recaptured Jerusalem. In fact, in, in next month will be the 50th anniversary of the Six Day War. In fact, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu even talked about the Six Day War with Trump just a few days ago when Trump visited Jerusalem. How interesting is that? 1917 is another Jubilee year. Why? Because the Ottoman Church was driven out by General Allenby. Skip ahead. And 30 Jubilee. 40 of Jubilee, right? 40 of Jubilee from Adam. This is actually calculating from that. 2017 is a very important year. It's a very prophetic year. And not to mention we have Trump and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who are related based on their prophetic numbers that God has planned out. And as I said before, when Trump was elected on January 21st, right, you know, when Trump took his office, the first day in office, it was January 21st, 2017. Trump was exactly 70 years, 7 months, and 7 days old. And on election day, on November 8th, 2016, it was exactly Benjamin Netanyahu's 7th year, 7th month, 7th day in office. There's no way you can say that's a coincidence. It has to be real. It's, it's got to be real. You know, it has to be real. And so based on these information, based on these evidence, I believe the rapture date is September 21st, 2017. September 21st uh, is the day of trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah. And the end date matches perfectly with the day of atonement in 2024, which is pretty much the end of tribulation, but then we're missing the 45 days that, that happens afterwards, which Daniel 12 says, those who endure till the end of 1,335 days will be blessed. Yeah, so I assume 45 days of rest or something like that. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I don't believe that uh, the tribulation will go on in those 45 days. So we can see from this 7,000 year period of human history, we're around... Okay, Ian's going to play a song. Okay, I want one volunteer, male or female. Dan, can you turn the lights on back there real quick? We'll close that door now because it's dark and I don't want any distractions. Can we close out? Y'all think of those videos? Any comments? 
the eyes were up above in the dark, and then the green was the nose. The, the nostrils have a seat. The girls, during the storm, she had to just play in the back or have a seat. And then the mouth was, you could see the teeth. That came about almost, the red that was visible almost a year ago. And then you can play it really low. That tongue really quiet so it doesn't interfere. Um, when it came out, NASA, like the guy was saying, they didn't catch on right away until they heard the Christians talking about the signs in the heavens. And then they read the Bible and figured out, uh-oh, this is the end. So because they don't know the Lord and they're full of fear, they put a piece of tape across. So what he was saying is, is we can't see. They blocked out new rooms. Oh, we need both of them to turn. Yeah, I think the other one's playing too. We just need to, need to close everything out and then shut it. It's behind it. Okay, it's in the what? It's in the folder down there. I gotta help her turn that off. <laughs> Did you get it? Amen. So, the, any other questions about the? Any other questions about the? The, the dragon they noticed two. There we go. The dragon they noticed two years ago. What bothers the people, like myself and everyone else that is watching this, we can't keep track of how close it's coming because NASA doesn't want to let us see. So what do we have to do? Go out and look ourselves. There are, there's another video that we don't have time to play tonight that I have of, of someone who took a picture of the eclipse. I want that door closed. The guy closed it for a reason. Come on, ladies. No more distractions. Okay. So, so when the um, when the eclipse took place, the gentleman in Texas was filming it, and you could literally see the red dragon right there. And they said, "Oh, look at it! Looks like a is that a the the guy laughed. He said, is that a uh, what do they call those drones? Oh, that looks like a drone that's in the shape of a dragon. Oh, cool! And he went back to filming." So you can literally see the dragon, it's that close to Earth. And Nubaru is even closer. When you see it that close to the sun, the far closer and closer and closer it gets to the sun, it looks like two deviled eggs, okay? It won't block the sun until the day after the rapture. The Bible says the whole Earth will become dark. As a matter of fact, Israel, on the day of September 23rd, Israel is the only country, which I find is interesting, because God's tired of his family not saying he's the Messiah. God's tired of his family being all about money. He's tired of his family trying to rule the earth with an iron fist. They're supposed to be the loving ones. They're supposed to be the nice ones, the givers. So he's done. That's why the whole tribulation is actually for the Jews. They did not obey the Lord and trust him as their Messiah. Okay. So to answer your question, the red dragon has been available to see for two years and is now coming closer and closer and closer. If you were to get binoculars, you could surely see it and it won't hurt your eyes. And if you were to get red infrared glasses, you'd be able to look up and see not only Nibiru, but the dragon. But most of the time they're together because that's his house. That's his weapon that he's using towards the earth. He was a snake in the beginning of Genesis, and he's a he's a dragon at the end. Sin fed him, and he's big. But we don't have anything to worry about, y'all. That's the great part. We have nothing to fear. Nothing. We read our Bible. We love the Lord. Next on Thursday, we're going to do a deliverance service, like we always do. I love it. But next Monday, the Lord spoke to me clearly. I have a list of all the characteristics of a rapture scene. And I just want to give them to you. But the number one is unforgiveness. Number two is offenses. If somebody offends you, psh, pull it off your back. Nobody's perfect. I've offended people too. And I'm not going to let that stop me from making the rapture. I forgive everybody because I know it's not the person. It's the demon on their back. And they don't even know it's there. We have demons on our back too. And we say and do mean things and do mean things to people too. And then we wish later, why did I say that? Why did I do that? 
And that person has to not take offense to us. So it works both ways. Let's just, Lord, I forgive everybody. I don't want any offenses on me. I want to put you first. Now, y'all don't have to worry about this. But those people out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't want the rapture to happen because they love their house too much. They love their Mercedes too much. They love their girlfriend too much. They love their kids too much, I'm being real. They love their spouse too much. They have everything above Yeshua. They have their career, their money, their, their uh, reputation, whether they're a movie star or they're on television. They're all concerned about, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? They really, in their heart, they don't want the rapture to happen because they love their life too much. And Jesus said, if you do not hate, and when he means hate, he doesn't mean hate like in America. Remember, Hebrew hate, not United States hate. Hebrew hate simply means to like less than. To like less than. I'll give you a little example. In Hebrew, we don't have as many, oh, by the way, sun, moon, stars, hurricanes, Noah days, gays and lesbians. Hmm? Gays and lesbians, lots. He's, he's bringing up another Bible verse. He says, the Son of Man will return. It'll be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Noah is flooding. Both in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, if you go back and read in the Hebrew, the rabbinical teachings, okay, you know what took place right before the flood? Thank you, Holy Spirit. He just told me, he reminded me on the way over here to say this, and it just now came to mind. Don't forget to tell him, he said, that the number one sin that God despised in Noah's day was that they blew Noah off. Whatever. It wasn't so much that they were so, of course they were, they were gay lesbians. But when Noah warned them, they were like, whatever. <sighs> Got a light? What took place in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot? Gay marriage became legal back then. Gay marriage became legal. And it was prominent. And it was okay. Everywhere there was women and women and men and men. Today, even, I don't know when the rest of the world became gay, but I know that the United States became gay two and a half years ago. Right? Maybe two the most. Two and a half, I'll say, be safe. That's the first time we could say it's rapture time. Because all the other signs hadn't taken place yet. Let me tell you one other sign that's taken place. The temple has already started to be built in secret, and Trump is helping out. Underneath the dome of the rock, the Israelis bought that back in July started working feverishly. As a matter of fact, on October the 1st, they took the rock off. Because they know what's supposed to take place there. They have made that Muhammad's... Anyway, there's a long story to it. That even if I told you now, you may not be... I may not have time to uh, help you understand it in full. But a lot of what they want you to believe, that this took place here and that took place here, did not take place. It took place in another location. So they are now rebuilding this dome to be the temple. And on December 23rd, September 23rd, exactly to nine months from December 23rd to September 23rd, Obama went to the UN, 7 30, 8 30 at night, and destroyed the relationships with, you, with Israel. Just told him I would rather just divide it up and have all the Arabs pick their land that they want. And he pulled the rug out from underneath them. That had to happen in order for Jesus to fulfill what he spoke in Matthew 24, Matthew 21, and what was taking place in Revelation when he says, when I come back, I will redeem and give them back their land. Because Obama took it out from underneath them. Now, I love black people but I look like even white people that go against the word of God. 
Gays are not Christian. Transgenders are not Christian. Pulling out the rug from God's family is not a good idea. So that had to take place. That's another sign. Dome of the Rock. And UN relations, that's what they call it. And you can look it up online and verify that everything the same is true. The UN relations with Israel has come to a halt because of what took place. And now Trump is trying to repair it. That's why he's going around visiting all these Arab nations trying to say, can you please come back to the table and let's read it all again. But the Bible says nothing will happen. And the new agreement will take place during the seven-year treaty between the Arabs and the Jews after everyone's missing a loved one. And the whole world says, I'm a one-world order. The whole world falls in love with each other because they're afraid they're next to disappear. And they want to know where their loved ones are. That's why God's going to leave the YouTube up for all these crazy Christians like myself that are going to be in heaven. They're going to see videos of where their loved ones went. It didn't, a UFO did not take your loved one. You don't need a microchip because they're in heaven watching you over the balcony. They're praying for you not to take a chip and make it to heaven. That's the truth. Okay, so we have these different signs. But let me just explain something in Hebrew. Let's say this is one of our letters, okay? Eh, I shouldn't have done that. Here, let's do this. This is one of our letters. Things can be misinterpreted through the, because this should have a dot above it, and it changes the whole meaning of the word. And then I can have two dots above it, and it can change the whole meaning. Or it can have three dots with a slash and change the whole meaning. Or just no slash. So when it's translated, this is why we have to go back and study the word. Because it may be close. Give me an example. That means right here. This means fire, male, and female. This is fire. This is male and female. Isn't that weird? So when they translated it, they had to check to make sure the dots. So there's Bible verses in there where it says woman when it should mean fire. And there's other ones where it says fire when it should mean woman if you study the content and you go back to the original Hebrew. Very fascinating. It's fun to study the Word of God. Maybe too late right now to do all that because the rapture's upon us. But at least study what you have. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. And the biggest thing is to overcome. She read it in her Bible verse. To he that overcomes, I will in no wise cast out of the kingdom of heaven. Overcome what, y'all? Overcome what? Only the overcomers make it. I know I smoked for seven years. I drank for longer than that. Watched pornography for longer than that. And I called myself a Christian. And I really, really thought that I was on my way to heaven. Nobody could convince me otherwise. Until God just came along one day and whack. Don't you ever mock me and think that you're going to get to heaven your way, young lady. You get to heaven my way. That's the truth. He humbles every single one of us until we learn, yes, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. He doesn't allow addictions in heaven. He doesn't allow hate, jealousy, pride, stealing, theft, competition. Brandy, unforgiveness, let it go. I need one volunteer. What this is right here is what we did last week. And we set it up and we had several people coming up and I wanted to show you what takes place in heaven after we get to heaven. The marriage supper of the Lamb, when we all get together, and there's no negative. And instead of being judged on the bad, you're judged on the good. And he says, because I gave you this talent, and you did this, 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 and this, and this, and this talent. Therefore, and he puts a crown on your head. A white robe around you. He says, now your table is sitting over there, and your mansion is over there. It's nothing but fun, 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 positive. The marriage supper of the Lamb. When we pass through our judgment 
of what we did with our talent. Not the bad. They get the bad. The ones that miss heaven and end up in hell, they get the white throne judgment. God says, I pull them out of hell. I pull them out of the sea everywhere. And I tell them exactly what they did to go where they did. So they don't think they're innocent. I wanted to tell them, I sent you this person. I sent you this person. I sent you this person. Did you listen? But ours is positive. So while they're going through him on earth, when asteroids are hitting, all the water turns blood. Oh, I forgot. In China right now, there's two huge bodies of water that are all blood. It's on the internet. Look it up. And the girl went to get, the girl, that's what the Bible says takes place too. And the girl went to get some water for her daughter where she usually goes, and the whole, it is bright red. Like somebody put cake mix in there. And she went down and, and the man was hollering, don't do it, it's, it's, it's uh, full of uh, what are these, uh, toxins. On the internet. All these signs have to take place. So there will be no fresh water, y'all. What are you going to drink? You can't buy gas, you can't buy food. Come on. We all have to either choose to make the rapture or die for Christ. But the death isn't going to be quick and easy and just get your head cut off. It's going to be torturous. Read the Bible. They're going to do their best to try to get you to take that ship so they can get you into hell. Because all of the demons up in the clouds, the heavens, will be released on the earth because the Holy Spirit's gone. And when they're released on the earth, the Bible says that we get to pass through, go on to heaven. If they're released, we go up, they go down. Please, I beg of you to make the rapture. And if you miss it, know that we're in heaven praying for you to get there. Know, know that we're in heaven praying that you make it, that you become strong enough to not take the chip. When it's Christmas, we talk about Christmas. When it's rapture, we talk about rapture. It's less than two weeks away, you all. Amen? September 21, 22, 23, 24. This is what they do. Since everybody's kind of quiet, I'll just do it to myself for a second. I'll take her. Come on, come on out for a second. I'll use her as an example. I did the other ones the other week. What's your first name? What's that? Bridget? Beautiful name, Bridget. Let's say Bridget is welcomed into heaven. Jesus puts a white robe on. And he says, Bridget, you made it! Now remember, Bridget made it. And she's like, oh, I can't believe I made it. I made it into heaven. And everybody that knows her, yeah, Bridget made it! They're all excited. This is what takes place after the rapture. We don't have to worry about crying. Bridget made it. And then Jesus has a cup. And he says, will you suck with me? There's a table waiting for you over there. Look at your family is over there. Wait to your family. And then he says, there's a mansion waiting for you. And the angels will bring you and take you to your mansion. Then he takes you up under the bridle. Let me uh, get my, oh, I have it on. He takes you up. This is what a Jewish wedding takes place, okay? He takes you up under the bridle canopy. And this is what he does. It's just so beautiful. You stand here and he walks around you seven times. Imagine the Son of God and they wonder why would a wedding take seven years? Well, come and find out. You stand there. Mm -hmm. Now you look like this. How many times have I walked around? Two? Okay. Three? You got to count for me. Three? Okay. R? Why seven? Keep going. What's seven mean? Seven days a week. How many? How many is this? Five? About two months. Seven is sealing. No more done. End of story. Isn't that beautiful? When you see seven, 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 you go, know, that's it. It's all done. Seven means completion. You don't have to add not one more dot. 
Now he says to her, do you commit yourself to me? And of course we do because we're there. But it's, this, it's the idea of getting baptized. See, on earth, it's the idea of doing this in heaven. So now she then walks around me seven times. You don't have to do it all around just this. You see? You commit to each other. And while you all are watching one by one by one, there's music going and dancing. And there is not, even out of the walls, there is music coming out of the walls. Not a boring moment, not once. And then he takes his shawl. Remember this from last week? Whether it's a male or a female, because in heaven there is no sex gender. We are like angels. Excitement, excitement, excitement is taking place in heaven while all hell is breaking loose on earth. Where would you rather be? Where would you rather be? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again the third day. Holy Spirit, if there is anything in my life that shouldn't be there, get it out and add what should. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And help my loved ones make it to heaven too. Help my loved ones make it to heaven. Make me, make me rapture ready. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, y'all. Bra brass knuckles. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I you can agree, disagree with me or agree with me. I don't care what it is in the word of God. Narrow is the path that makes it to heaven. Did you know that 80% of the United States calls themselves Christians, whether they're Mormons or Catholics or whatever, they're in the lump of Christians. But do you know that very few will make it and millions that call themselves Christians will never go? They'll have to suffer through the tribulation because they've got those hidden sins that God said, I can't let you in. Remember, if you love someone, you spend time with them. If you love God, what do you do? If you love Yeshua, what do you do? If you love the Holy Spirit, what do you do? Worship. Isn't that awesome? And when you worship and the tears start flowing, guess what happens? Matthew chapter 25. Your oil gets filled. And all of a sudden, you're so, you're so happy, you don't know why you're smiling. And then he says, ah, I'll take those that are full of oil. Those that are half, you stay behind. You want to spend half time with me? See you later. Matthew 25 is not a lie. We have to spend quality time with the Word and have our teeth all the way filled. He didn't say be half filled with the Holy Spirit. Be all the way filled with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 25. How do you do that? Fill up your gas tank, read your Bible, worship, pray, and walk away from that stinking cockroach that wants to get up in your plate of food. Okay? You know that. You know the cockroach story. He was joking with me one day and said he was going to put barbecue sauce on it and chop it up and eat it. <laughs> but the cockroach is a representation of a sin or a habit. When it comes crawling up in your life, you smash that thing. Stomp on it with what? Look that? What do you stomp on the cockroach with? Speaking of sheet of paper. And then go back to business. Well, thank you all for coming.
I'm glad you like the videos. Hope it enlightened you a little bit that Dr. Oakley isn't crazy. It's a fact. When signs happen, you can't get away from them. Sun, moon, stars, hurricanes. Everything's happening at one time. Something's going on. And don't ever believe the devil's lie. Oh, we got time. Oh, we got time. Uh -huh. That's okay. You'll be in the second harvest but well, we're waving from heaven. Are we saying it's happening? We're saying we see the signs that says it's going to happen, and the Bible doesn't lie. We're not God. God is the only one that knows. But we know it's either this day, this day, this day. So don't believe the lie that we have time. Oh, whatever. Okay. You will suffer through the tribulation, and you'll remember my words that I said you need to go before the trip. Get ready now, not later. Amen? Okay, well, let me uh, close out the night if y'all can help me. I know y'all can get ready, but if y'all can help me close this out. I didn't get to half of what I wanted to get to, but that was what I wanted to represent again to you, the positive that takes place in heaven after the rapture. So Heavenly Father, everyone that came to the service tonight, I ask in Jesus' name, we cover with the blood of Jesus Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit and the whole armor. Father, I thank you that you open up their minds and their eyes so they know the truth. And they don't mock at you. They don't pridefully say, ah, no. They'll humble themselves and say, not my will, Father, but thine be done. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name that I not only pray for the people in this room, but every person that has ever, ever, ever set foot on this property. May you humble them and help them make the rapture. Do whatever it takes. Especially now, when we're so close to the end. Do whatever it takes, Father, to get them into heaven so the devil can't grip them into hell. Father, I thank you. Bless them that bless you. Bless them that read their Bible. Bless them that pray. Bless them that believed me tonight, Lord. I know not everybody does, and that's okay. But bless those that did. Please, Father. I want us to sit with them at the banquet table in heaven. And we can laugh about it when we can say, remember when you tried to mimic this on earth? It wasn't even close. Because heaven is so much better. Father, I thank you. Put a hedge of protection on the wall of fire. The Holy Spirit, fire on everyone. And, 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 and uh, yeah, if you could please pray, amazing grace, nice and loud. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. She is so cute. Thank you for letting her come. I'll see you Thursday, y'all.